Happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Sky Yuma Weekly, presented by the Minnesota Lottery. I'm Justin Gard from KFAN Radio and the Gopher Radio Network, and we thank you for joining us today after our usual time. Of course, yesterday was a holiday, no school in session, nobody around, so we're kicking it to Tuesday. We'll return to our Monday schedule next week, and as you can tell, our scene has changed Yet again, with all the new building going on on campus, we're making another move. We are on the sixth floor of the Lando Lake Center for Excellence in a building that basically opened this week. Student athletes, now that they've returned to school, are coming in, getting their first look at it, getting their first crack at it. So if you can see the downtown views at some point, uh, you're lucky because this is what they're looking at uh, basically every single day. So we have a fun show for you today. I've never been quite as overmatched with the first guest in our 20 or so shows, but David Plummer is our guest today, former University of Minnesota swimmer, former Olympian in Rio de Janeiro a couple of years ago, and now in student athlete development. Thanks for joining us, David. Absolutely, thanks for having me. We're gonna talk a lot about the new place and yeah. your new role, but we gotta talk Olympics if we have an Olympian <laughs> in here. And I'm curious, first of all, it, it was funny to see Rio de Janeiro, 2016. It feels to me like that was like two weeks ago. Now that we've got Winter Olympics coming up here in about a month, but how's it feel for you? Like, do you, is that something you think about every day? That I was just in Rio and now I'm here in Minneapolis and it's one degree, or what's that transition been like? No, honestly, it feels like a like a different lifetime almost. Um, just just life has changed quite a bit since then. Going going from the the constant grind of competing and, and traveling and, um, and and the training that goes along with it to to the shift into a, a more of a nine to five role has been. Um, an adjustment for sure, but uh, just just feels like it's been been a while since I've been part of the team. But but awesome to to kind of get in this new role and, and be able to help. What is the biggest difference in terms of waking up every day with one single purpose of what you're doing, trying to swim faster, and every th every decision you make, every family decision you make, is focused on that. To now, the nine to five grind, so to speak. It's a different kind of life. What's the biggest adjustment? Well, I, I think you kind of hit it there. It's that it's that singular focus. Um, where I had one goal in mind, there was there was only one thing I was working towards, um, professionally at least, to where now I'm I'm trying to help in a lo in a lot of different areas, um, and 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 be part of a team that that is working on, you know, a lot. We're we're trying to help our student athletes in a lot of dif different areas, whether it's professional leadership, uh, academic, whatever it is. We're we're trying to be there for them and resources to them. So so no day necessarily is the exact same. We typically are introduced to Olympians on the international stage when they're teenagers or you know, young, young people, so to speak. You were technically, I guess, an old vet as a 30-year-old rookie on the Olympic team. Do you think, not that it took that long, because there's never like a, a blueprint for being an Olympian, but do you think the fact that you were a little bit older and you had a little bit of a life outside of swimming gave you a different perspective than some of your teammates, perhaps? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I was I was a father when I when I made the team. Actually, we we had our our, our second one about six weeks before Olympic trials. So um, it, it it definitely shifts the focus. And and for me, it was it was really really positive um, to be able to to kind of live for something outside of myself. For, for sure. that performance to be uh, important to other people was was a really positive thing. And for for me to feel like I was I was showing my kids. Um, what they were capable of, what, what they were going to be able to do in their life was, was a really cool thing and a, and a really great motivator for me. What do you feel like your experience at the University of Minnesota did for you here? You're an All-American 05 to 08, I think 14 All-American type thing, all, all kinds of accolades. You're in the Aquatics Hall of Fame, of course. What did you take from that experience moving forward to, to your career after college? You know, um, I, it, sometimes it feels like to me like it, it never really finished um, because after my four years here, um, I did a lot of training on campus. Right. Um, did a lot of training with our coaches, and in my last two years moving into sixteen, I was working solely with our with our coaches on campus. So, um, f for me, I think it was it was that team atmosphere. Um, that was what was really really cool about being a part of part of the Gophers from 05 to 08, you know, we, we won two Big Ten championships right. and we won them on the last relay. So it was, uh, we, we had that culture of high performance, but, but that culture of just sort of never give up. We were going to do whatever it took to, to be successful. And I think that being around those people and, and learning from them has, has impacted, you know, kind of every area of my life as I've moved forward. I remember right after Rio, you moved into kind of like an internship role here on campus, uh, one of the most high profile interns they've probably <laughs> ever had here. But now, you, now you're an adult, now you've got a job, now you're working here in the student athlete development department. Tell us a little bit about your role now. 
Yeah, so, so we're working to build a leadership program being for our student athletes and for our coaches. Um, we're, we're trying to create better leaders. So, so when, when kids come in their freshman year, they're, they're learning things about leadership that are, that are going to help them be better athletes as they move on, be better students, and, and, and move on to the next level of, of whatever it is, whether it's going on to be a professional athlete, going on to be a doctor, going on in the business world. Um, those, those leadership skills are, are things that are going to help them in every area of their life, so that that's kind of our our goal, our purpose. We're we're building that leadership you, um, and our our goal is to help and to give back and to create better leaders on campus. I asked Quincy Lewis this question last week, but how does it help you? I don't know if credibility is the right word, but maybe knowing the experience, and, and you're much younger than Quincy, which I'm sur sure you appreciate. So your experience actually translates a little bit better to the student athletes that are coming in here. But you've lived life as a student athlete here at the U. How much does that help you when you're communicating to these student athletes what they're going through or about to go through? You know, you know, I hope it I hope it gives us an opportunity to for them to learn from our mistakes. You know, there's I, I definitely didn't get everything right um, in my four years of school here, and there's things I would have done differently. And uh, hopefully, it does give us a, a little bit of credibility with our student athletes to say um, I, I was good, but I could have been better. Um, I, I could have succeeded in other areas more. And that would have helped me be a better athlete, be better in, in, in academics. So um, I, I hope that we're able to, to help them learn um, and help them learn and maybe not have to make as many mistakes sure. as we did. So you're in the new building. I'm curious, uh, this has been, you've been here basically the whole time from shovel in the ground to where we are now. What's this building going to do for all the student athletes here on campus? I, I, my hope is that it creates a sense of community. Um, I, th I think it's uh, when, when you have teams that are only over at the pool or over, only over at the hockey, hockey arena that uh, you just kind of get siloed logistically. It's, it's hard to build that community of, of student athletes. Um, and just with having food here, everybody's in the same place all of a sudden. So we're able to ta talk. We're able to maintain those relationships with, with people from across campus who we otherwise wouldn't have seen every day. So, so that's my hope, that, that we create that, that community um, and strengthen that community that's already here. Last cliche, obligatory question, where are the medals from Rio? Do you yeah. keep them in your car, keep them in your pocket, <laughs> just so you can you know, show them whenever? Well, where, who, who has them, where are they? They are uh, in my closet at home, um, and I don't think I brought them out for a while. So, really? Yeah. Why not? I, I'd have them everywhere. I'd have them on the door, the the door of my house, and just say, "Welcome. Here's my medals." But you're a little more, you have a little more humility than me, I guess. Yeah, I, I try, I try. Um, no, it's it, it's it's one of the most one of the proudest moments of my career was was being a member of the Olympic team. To to be able to say that I was an Olympian for Team USA is is something that I I take a lot of pride in. Um, but in terms of the medals, they were they were a a fun result, but that's sure. not what it was about. Well, we appreciate you taking the time, sharing a few memories, and uh, talking about your new role here, and, and good luck the rest of the way with the new building. Hope everybody knows where their office is and everybody's keys <laughs> work, <laughs> but uh, hopefully we can do this again. Thanks, David. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. That's David Plummer, Student Athlete Development, former Gopher and former Olympian. Google him. You can learn an awful lot more. We had a lot of fun in 2016 reading on his fantastic story. Just getting going here on Sky Uma Weekly, presented by the Minnesota Lottery. When we come back, it was a big weekend for the Spirit Squads in Orlando, and just just another big weekend for Goldie the Gopher. We'll give you some details on that when we come back.